Okay, shalom, shalom. Om yasha'ala. Koholoyim la, yahawo, bahashim, yahushai, bahashim. Recha hakodash, double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And that by the spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shemiah Washai to the best of their ability. This is Yachanan Awaf just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, I'm driving, of course, so I'll be roughly paraphrasing scriptures. But, you know, just by the Spirit, this was a movie that I um, checked out last night or whatever. I be, You know, I go to the Salvation Army store. <laughs> you know, they got uh, 50 cent movies, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the, the originals for 50 cent. I'm like, you know, hey, I grab a couple here and there sometimes, you know, I'm um, playing my DVD player, you know. So I grabbed this one yesterday and I actually watched it last night. May have to do a rewatch on it. But, you know, I overall got the grasp of it. But it's called Cold Mountain with Nicole Kidman, Jude Law. They're pretty much the main characters. And um, so basically... There, you know, it, it's I think it was it's based in like the 1800s. War is going down, or war is just about to start. And I, I, you know, I noticed that they was actually it was a church scene. I don't mean to get a movie away, but it was a uh, 2003 anyway, as far as I think when this came out. So it's you know, <laughs> but it's a good watch, you know. Uh, but they had a church scene, and this guy comes in and he, you know, he whispers to a guy, you know, that they're about to get, about to go to war. And they're geeked about it. Like, we're getting our war. We're getting our war. You know, so they geeked about this war. They ready to go. But when it all came down to it, that shit was so drastic and rough that, you know, they, they um, a lot of them were, were called deserters, you know. So you had this um, team of, you know, uh, uh, you know, soldiers or whatever that, you know, they pretty much call it treason if you deserted them, which I guess that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Shit, if you out there fighting with somebody and then all of a sudden motherfucker busts up. <laughs> you know, but I guess it was getting long. It was getting senseless to some guys, but they was, you know, running guys down for treason. But the moral of the story, pretty much overall, this guy was in love with um Nicole Kidman here, and she was in love with him. They writing back and forth, you know what I'm saying? And um, then years goes on. You know, this lady is waiting on this guy for years. But um, the starting point of the war is the point that I wanted to get to was that when the guy rolled up. And they was talking about we got our war. He was like, um, don't worry about it. We'll take care of your women. You know what I'm saying? But pretty much that was it was like a whole lot of women that was just left alone. And, and, you, and you know, that kind of the scenes that, I'm, you know, I was seeing, it was like they had, you know, a scene where this guy, he, he had deserted. He was like, fuck it. I'm going back home. But he was walking for a long time man. wherever he was, it was a. A nice distance from um, his state or whatever, but he's going through all kinds of stuff. But he's coming across women, you know, that's trying to throw him the box. He came across one house where it was like three or four women in there. Even the man's husband, you know, uh, uh, you know, all the women was like, uh, uh, nope, that's me. I'm talking about like wild savages, like no, he's mine tonight, you know, type of deal. And um, so. You know, it's just scene after scene, pretty much, where, you know, it was no men. And then he comes across this one lady. I forgot what this lady name is. Um, she played the little girl in that movie, The Professional, back in the days or whatever. But um, he came across her house. And, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm a Confederate soldier, whatever, whatever. It's raining and all that shit. So he ends up, he like, I'm just looking for food and a place to stay because it was raining hard as shit. So... You know, she's like, yeah, I got a rifle. So, But she ends up letting him in, you know, and, and giving him, you know, the baby is sick, you know, and crying and shit from fever, whatever, whatever. But she's there by herself with the baby because her husband got killed in the war, too. You know, younger chick, you know what I'm saying? Her husband was younger. He got killed. So, you know, she loaned him, well, gave him some of the clothes from her husband and had him sleeping out in the barn or whatever. But she went and got him. She was like, you know, can you do me a favor? Can you just at least lay with me? You know, he's telling her that, you know, how he's in love with this lady, Nicole Kidman, basically the part. He's like, I'm in love with someone. I'm in love with someone, whatever, whatever, you know, but she was just like, shit, man, just hold me, <laughs> you know. So ended up, you know what I'm saying? He, he ended up, she started crying and shit because she's so lonely. And um, he holds her throughout the night. And then when they wake up in the morning, some damn, you know, the uh, the, the, the deserter soldiers 
was there, you know. So they run off into the creek because they, you know, she's seen them like if they catch you in here, you know, we're both going to catch it bad. But they didn't give a shit anyway because he jumped out the window and ended up running out the back up and, you know, kind of like up a, a hill to the top of the woods, so to speak. But they ended up coming in there, snatching her ass out of there, put her baby out in the ground. And she was just screaming, like, can you please cover him, you know, because it was cold, you know, it was, they didn't give a shit, you know, <laughs> they, and then he snatches her up, take her back in the crib, you know, about to take the box. And but that, you know, that that goes off to, you know, the women, you know, um, or the weaker vessel, man, women are the weaker vessel. It was nothing she could do. You know, they ended up taking her. She was like, I got some chickens. <laughs> I got a hog. You know, you take that hog. I'm dead. I'm dead. You know, because they was pretty much relying on what they what they could. All the women in that movie were not doing well. It, it was just like they were running low on food. There's one lady right here to the right. Um, Renee. I can't think of her last name. Right. I can't see her name. But she was the one. She was the, like the toughest lady in the movie. You know, as far as handling growing food and sustaining or whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because Nicole Kidman, she was real, you know, real prissy and ladylike. You know what I'm saying? She was into flower arranging and, you know, but she, <laughs> she couldn't grow a damn flower. But she was into, you know, piano, you know, reading books, you know, lady stuff, you know, because they was really feminine back then. But, you know, hey, she held on, oh, man. She waited on this guy. <laughs> but anyway, the point that I wanted to make is that, you know, all the women in the movie, they were lonely and they didn't have anyone. And a man was very valuable then. And, you know, that's what, you know, roughly paraphrasing the scriptures, man. Um, you know, the, the man is going to be, the, you know, the Israelite man, the elect of the Israelite men are going to be valuable in these last days. And, you know, the Isaiah 4 and 1, you know what I'm saying, where it talks about seven women shall take hold of one man. All that stuff is going to come into play because the reason why there was no men, and the scriptures talked about that, how, you know, um, there's going to be a lot of widows, roughly paraphrasing, because of war. And when Esau get the draft in every damn body, you know what I'm saying? And um, he gets to getting down with his World War Three type of deal. It's going to it's not going to be men are going to be scarce. You already you got a large. part. Well, you know, you got a pretty decent population of the, you know, the dudes that want to play the LGBTQ. You got a huge population of uh, 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 people, uh, men in jail or especially Jake's among Jake. And it's going to come a time where shit going to get chaotic. And women are going to really see that, yeah, I need a fucking man. I'm telling you, this movie right here is the perfect example of needing a man. And also, there was another part in there that was spiritual, too. That was, um, because when they finally did get back up with each other, they finally, he finally made it there to get up with her. And they was kind of, you know, they was talking. Nightfall came, you know, to sing, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying, but... You know, it, it really wasn't even nobody there to even marry them, you know, to even, you know, go to a church service and do all those things. And what did what Nicole Kidman told him? She was like, well, if you say to me three times, marry me, marry me, marry me. And I said back to you three times, marry me, marry me, marry me. then we're married. And they said that shit and started kissing on each other and had sex. And so when the brothers or the, you know, the apostles and elders go up into, you know, um, sex consummates a marriage. That's exactly what it is, because, you know, there is no such thing as, um, you know, a man getting on a on bended knee with a ring and asking a woman to marry. Him. That's not in the Bible. Those vows that they say in the church that none of that stuff is in the Bible. That's that's the, those are man made ways of marriage, so to speak. And then you jumping in and, and allowing Esau, Edom, the so-called white man to get in on the third party where he's he's in your marriage. Now he can just dictate, you know who gets what and whatever in case she don't want to be with you or he don't want to be with her or whatever the case may be. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to go downtown and, you know, um, stand before a judge and he's going to bless your union or, you know, even going to damn Vegas for that matter. I mean, if you ask me if you, you're going to get married, you might as well go to Vegas and do something cheap real quick. But, you know, the apostles say, you know, always tell us that no, don't get into none of that. Um, um, Esau's government, man. You know, we, we don't need no parts of um, him having no more control of our life than he already has, you know, type of deal. But I just wanted to point that out, man. You know, I seen a few, uh, it, you know, it was a spiritual movie because it was it was based, like I said, in the 1800s or whatever. 
That was a time when men were actually men. They were working the yards. They were working the fields. You know, they was building things. The women were generally, you know, chilling. You know what I'm saying? Having tea parties, you know, um, making sure that the home was okay, taking care of the children and, and things of that nature. So it was a time where a man, a man had his place and a woman knew her place. And it wasn't like how it is today. So now you got women that's um, playing the, man, the role of a man. And it's not going to end well for them in these last days, man. They're going to see that I really need a man. And they're going to remember all the good men they ran off. It's not going to be no, uh, uh, you know, I want somebody six foot three. You know, he, you know he's got to be muscular. He's got to be making this amount of money. No, you're going to take um, a, a four foot three guy that's, that's, that's uh, 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 just as wide as he is tall scrunched up looking you know <laughs> whatever you're not gonna be worried about none of those things man when 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 shit really hits the fans you know so i just wanted to just touch on that for a hot sec i didn't want to keep it long you know it just um popped back in my mind this movie and i really want to watch it again because like i said it, it, it was good it, you know it had some really good actors in it um you can pretty much see how they were they i mean it, it was a all they could do was live off the land, you know. They had little general stores. Of course, you know, you had general stores that sold certain things or whatever. But, you know, all those people, man, mostly they were just living off the land. But it ended up, <laughs> it was just women with no men because they was all being killed in war. And the guy, you know, he kept coming back to get more men, you know, and it was just more and more men. They, and some of them dudes just got shook and was like, fuck that, man. I'm not doing this. And pretty much that goes off into the draft because that's what that guy was doing. I think his name was Teague in the movie. He ends up coming through and he, you know, he he, he comes through and basically like, hey, if you a man in this in this county or in this, you know, or in this, you know, this particular state, then you have to join. I think they was based in um, South Carolina or something like that. Virginia, some crazy. I don't know. Anyway, but, hey, those men were getting slaughtered. And that's what's going to happen with World War III. You know, when, when these men get shipped off, they're not coming back. It's not going to be no coming back, man, when, when, when the shipment goes out, man. You, you're not coming back here. And you women, that's um, because they're talking about drafting y'all as well. You're not coming back here. It's going to be straight, all-out chaos, man. One thing the guy did say, you know, he was like, shit, man, whatever was in me that was human before, that shit not in me no more. That's, that's what he told her when he got back. He was like, you know, I mean, it, hey, it just is what it is, man. But the basis of the movie was the women were alone and they were scared and they were afraid. And they actually, you know, because it, it, it was a time period where they knew they needed men. It wasn't like, you know, like today. Like today, a woman to tell you straight up, I don't need you. I don't need no man. I can do this all by myself. But in the meanwhile, you know, if you're not dependent upon the state getting food stamps or Section 8 or whatever the case may be, you working two to three jobs trying to um, hold shit down and you're tired. You know, I know people like that, man. I know a lot of um, um, women that are just like, man, they, they, they just, hey, they tired. They're working two, three jobs, trying to hold down these high-ass bills. Then got kids and shit, too. And they really need help. I can just see them like they moving slower, walking slow, got that, that, that look on their face of there's no brightness there. I got cousins like that, girl cousins. You know, they, 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 they struggling. They going through it, man. They going through it. Then ran off every good dude they've ever had. Like I got one cousin, <laughs> you know, her and my um, my other little cousin, you know, well, she's my cousin, but her daughter, she, she's like 21, 22 or whatever. But shit. I'm like, damn, they, they was talking about, um, you know, they came by to get the lawnmower, asking me about my lawnmower. But, um, you know, I needed a repair on it, so it wasn't uh, up and going at the time. But I'm like, well, shit. She was like, yeah, my yard is all out of hand. It's the waist high. I'm like. I'm like, God damn, y'all pretty. And they pretty, too. Like, y'all don't know no man that can come through and cut the grass for you. That This is what it's done come to. Because you used to have women where, you know, even if a guy was just trying to impress you, he would do that shit. He ain't even getting no boxing. He would do it. Just trying to get up on you. The men not dealing like that no more. They're not just offering help no more. 
they don't, you know. Shit, the men, man, they, 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 they don't care no more. They, they not opening no doors. They not holding no doors open. They will, and, and, and actually, they will, they will get at you like a dude in the street out here these days. So that's why we say um, walk circumspectly and pray, man, and um, come under, you know, hey, if you, hey, y'all better come underneath one of the men of the Lord, man, in these last days, because he's gonna be your head and your covering. Like Yahweh Shai, you know, is our head and covering, you know? And Yahweh, you know, being overall the head and covering overall. But yeah, you women, man, it's going to come a point, man, where, psh, trust me, <laughs> it ain't looking good out here. I'm telling you, men don't have no respect like they used to for women, man. Going way back in those days, I'm just looking at like, because, you know, that's why I like to watch period pieces. You know, I like to watch um, older movies or movies that's set in the older um, time period or older days to kind of, you know, get that glimpse of what it was like, you know. The women all had dresses on. They wasn't all provocative, you know what I'm saying, and dressed all skimpy. They actually had, you know, um, a sense of shamefacedness, you know. Not these days, man. So, it, we, hey, you come along. America has come a long ways from that lifestyle, see but things are starting to be reversed man and we're going to go back to you know um that sort of that type of living so to speak you know and, um when the kingdom comes women are going to be in a place it wasn't no no women in, in in you know back then you know so to speak you know they wasn't you know uh, uh disrespecting their their husbands and stuff like that they were just you know hey, they, they kept on the move they handled stuff around the house they they was out doing gardening they was you know even handling the animals at some certain points if the men were doing something else you know but hey they 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 had a fresh food and 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 the house was kept and you know that's what they done man and, you know but now it's like these women for the streets boy they out here in these streets but i'm in out there man i didn't want to matter of fact let me see though I'm pulling up on this light let me grab this one real quick here. If I can, it's lock you. Uh, it says I, Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So that's coming, man. Can you imagine that? It's going to be some serious shit going on where uh, 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 especially a so-called black woman saying something like that. She's going to share you with six other women, possibly. And that and that number seven goes into completion. So we really don't know what's the number, really. The real number is going to be for certain men. Some men are going to have more than others. So, yeah, man, we're coming into some times where. Women are definitely gonna gonna go back to what the what they supposed to be. Um, um, you know. Let me see. I might be able to read this, and let me see how it reads in the easy to read version. I'm at another light. At that time, seven women will grab one man and say, "Please marry us. We will supply our own food and make our own clothes. You won't have to do anything else if you let us wear your name and take away our shame." See. See, right now, Jake got to go through uh, all kinds of hoops, you know, uh, you know, um, trying to take him out to dinner, spending all kind of money to impress him. These women even talking about you can't take me here, or take me there for a first date. Just riding on a high cloud, man. But it's going to come a point where you, it's going to get so rough that you're going to accept this. You're not going to be like, oh, well, I don't eat at Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> well, I don't eat here. I don't want. I can't believe him. He's trying to take me to, you know. Ain't gonna be no damn Ruth Chris. Ain't gonna be you know Benny Hanna's or wherever the hell y'all these popular places that you trying to eat at and making it. You know while you taking selfies, um, of your damn plate and, and, and your daiquiri. Ain't gonna be none of that shit, man. Gonna be none of that. It's gonna come a point where y'all gonna be on that tip of, hey, look, man, just hey, deal with me, please. Just deal with me, please. I'll share you, <laughs> you know, so, you know, things got to get rough for a woman in America, an American woman. <sighs> Come on, bro. To get to this point, oh, man, it's going to it's going to have to be real rough. It's going to have to be something really, really scary. Right. 
So with that, I pray that this lesson was edifying. Kwame Yasala.